Today's patient sustained a significant blunt trauma injury as a teenager, causing an irritodialysis, and now he presents with a nuclear sclerotic and posterior subcapsular cataract for cataract surgery, making an incision here. Uh, did a lot of initial studies showing that the lens uh, had pretty good zonular support. I'm adding a viscoelastic here to move the uh, iris uh, out of uh, harm's way as we get ready to do the capsularexis seen here. Uh, our, our emphasis here is going to be protect the iris, remove the cataract, uh, repair the astigmatism using an, a toric intraocular lens, and then also repair the iris. So doing a full capsularexis here, I'll do a little bit more aggressive hydro dissection here so that I can avoid uh, almost a pop and chop technique so that I can avoid uh, risking uh, injury to the iris as I use combination uh, uh, cohesive and dispersive viscoelastics. So I'm keeping the iris uh, out of harm's way by, by manipulating the lens and staying away from the iris. Uh, using um, kind of a chop technique here, removing the uh, the rest of the uh, lens material without injuring the iris. The viscoelastic and the uh, technique keeps the uh, iris away from phacal emulsification tip just removing the last bit here after i get the remaining nuclear fragment here i'll then remove the uh, the residual cortex uh, using irrigation aspiration just getting this last bit of nucleus and epinucleus here you could make a successful argument to repair the iris first and um, at, at, at every point, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to discontinue and do that. But this is working pretty well, and I'm, I'm, I'm able to avoid uh, iris damage as I remove all the lens material. Next, I'll open up the capsular bag. This will be with a, a cohesive viscoelastic. And I'll insert a, a, a toric intraocular lens into position and uh, properly orient that lens. Go ahead and add some additional viscoelastic. There's a couple different techniques we could use to repair the iris at this point. I'm going to go ahead and try to... Um, since I've made a posterior entry to my wound, I'm actually going to try to just partially incarcerate that iris in the, at the entry site of the wound and um, do so in a manner that doesn't promote wound gape or iris prolapse or allow epithelial ingrowth. So I'm going to go ahead and just sort of uh, support, the, support the iris here with the with a couple of sutures. You don't want to over tighten these sutures because they're going to need to stay in place a long time and you don't want to uh, cause uh, uh, problems with the wound by uh, creating too tight a suture. Again, you don't want to make you want to make absolutely sure that you don't have iris prolapse or allow a wound that would allow uh, epithelial ingrowth, which would create even more significant uh, problems. A couple of my colleagues have suggested Hoffman pockets for this, and I think that's a very appropriate and elegant way of uh, repairing this. 
Uh, fortunately, after taking out all the viscoelastic from a separate incision, uh, the patient not only did extremely well, but was incredibly impressed that his pupil ended up not only round, but reactive to light. There's the pre-op, and you can compare that to the post-op, and, and uh, it worked out extremely well.